McMaster's Admission Success Rate. Before we begin examining some sample questions, let's take a second to review McMaster's admission statistics from the previous admission cycle in order to learn why it is so crucial to ace the CASPER test. During the previous application cycle, there were nearly 5,000 applicants to the McMaster's Michael de Groot Medical School. Only 203 of these applicants gained acceptance to the program. That was a mere 4.1% success rate. What we also know from the admission statistics is that a lot of students with excellent verbal reasoning and GPA scores did not gain admission. Furthermore, an examination of the statistics reveals that more than 30% of accepted students had average or below average GPA scores. More interestingly than that is the fact that almost 50% of accepted students had average or below average MCAT scores. Thus, the moral of the story is this. Regardless of how well you do in your MCAT and how high your GPA score may be, without a competitive CASPER score, you will not be invited for an interview. Put differently, even if you have a below average GPA and MCAT scores, you can still gain admission into McMaster if, and only if, you ace your CASPER test. Admission stats and why you must ace the CASPER test. So, here you can see the actual statistical figures that were published by McMaster Medical School from their previous application cycle. As we discussed a few seconds ago, you can clearly see that 60 out of the 203 students admitted had a GPA of 3.7 or less, and 95 out of 203 accepted students had a verbal reasoning score of 10 or less. Thus, it is clear that CASPER plays a major role in the admissions process at McMaster. Recall that CASPER is a virtual multiple mini-interview, and thus, it helps narrow down the pool of applicants that are eventually invited to the actual MMI. How to prepare for the CASPER Now, before we begin reviewing a CASPER sample scenario, let's quickly identify some myths and facts about how to best prepare for this very important test. Myth number one, there are no right or wrong answers. This is actually stated on the admissions website at McMaster. Although there are no right or wrong answers when it comes to the various scenarios you encounter on the CASPER test, there are, however, appropriate and inappropriate answers that you can provide. If this was not the case, then a lot more individuals with fantastic GPA and MCAT scores would be admitted to McMaster. But of course, we now know that is not the case. Myth number two. You can't really prepare in advance for this test because no one really knows what will be on it. Well, if that was the case, then you wouldn't be able to prepare for the MCAT or any of your exams during your undergraduate years. Just like any other tests, there are a number of things you can do in order to prepare for this test. And we will discuss those things in more detail as we go through this webinar. So now let's talk about some facts. Fact number one. Preparing for the CASPER test is like riding a bike. Practice is key. Perhaps you've heard of the saying, practice makes perfect? Well, this is not true, and it's not what we mean by practice. In actuality, practice makes permanent, and only perfect practice makes perfect. So if you continue to practice the wrong way, then you will permanently perform the task in the incorrect manner, no matter what that task may be. This leads us to our next fact. Fact number two. The best way to practice is using realistic simulations. Just like preparing for the MCAT, the CASPER test requires you to perform numerous simulations in order to ensure you are absolutely prepared on your actual test date. Fact number three. Sample questions and simulations used for preparation purposes are ineffective and useless without proper professional feedback from an expert. Unless someone can identify your strengths and weakness and give you appropriate feedback on your performance, you will not be able to improve your performance. This is true whether you're an athlete, a student, or a medical candidate about to perform an online test such as CASPER. Professional guidance and feedback will be important in helping you formulate appropriate responses. And this webinar is one such tool. Fact number four. Simply reading books and guides without performing realistic simulations and receiving expert feedback is an ineffective method to prepare for CASPER. Fact number five. You must, I repeat, you must have a strategy and a plan of action when encountering CASPER scenarios. We will discuss what a good strategy would be when encountering CASPER scenarios later on in this webinar. Let's move on to fact number six. Getting yourself familiarized with professional ethics and specifically Canadian medical ethics. Although CASPER is designed to test qualities and characteristics that should have been developed within you over time based on your life experiences, being aware of ideas important in professional ethics and medical ethics does not hurt. 
Some excellent resources are the CanMeds framework, Medline Plus, and books such as the Textbook on Professional Ethics and Human Values, Meaningful Work, Rethinking Professional Ethics, Reason and Professional Ethics, and lastly, Doing It Right, A Practical Guide to Ethics for Medical Trainees and Physicians, by Philip C. Hebert. So now that we've clarified some facts from myths and have identified some practical ways to prepare for the CASPER test, it's time to move on and tackle a CASPER sample question.